you stay up here with me for a minute because uh, this is the oldest entrepreneur in Bitcoin that I know. And now I'm going to introduce the newest entrepreneur in, or let's say want to be entrepreneur in Bitcoin. And this is where I think the future is. These are entrepreneurs that already have made their bones in their own profession. And this happens to be my uh, daughter-in-law's brother, and he's a master chef. Uh, in fact, I, Roger, come on up here. Uh, you know your background better than I do. All I know is that you are a hell of a cook, and you've cooked for people all over the world. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then what's going to happen after you tell us about yourself. We're going to kind of get seven or eight chairs up here, and you're going to have some of the best advice, free advice in the world. And then we're going to come back and see what you look like in five years, okay? <laughs> if you make it that long. I like those glasses. Thank you, guys. Okay. How's it going, guys? Uh, thank you, uh, Ugly. I am here to uh, to represent the, the working man. I am an actual working man. I brought my uh, chef shoes. I've been uh, working in these shoes for uh, for the past two weeks. I fed a group of uh, 30 people breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I was the only one to, uh, to cook for them uh, on my own because I didn't have a crew because I'm just a working man. And uh, my glasses broke. <laughs> so I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my, uh, I'm waiting to, to set up uh, my, my green wallet with Juan uh, so that um, I can receive my, uh, my first Bitcoin uh, so that I can uh, fix my glasses. Um, I've worked on um, uh, alternative communities and alternative economies for, um, for quite a long time from places like uh, Sri Lanka, working on um, analog forestry, working with uh, Central American uh, youth that are uh, shifting the paradigm, um, trying to uh, create resilient communities so that folks are able to stay um, in Latin America without having to um, separate their families and send them to uh, the United States. I've been working with um, with groups in uh, in Mexico, in uh, India, in, in Thailand, um, and uh, focusing on um, the supply chain. So I'm really interested in the supply chain um, economics and uh, watching the route of um, of ingredients and the route of uh, commerce and the route of uh, products um, as they shift and uh, and transfer from hand to hand across the world. Um, I have uh, been able to cook for um, some people on both sides of, uh, of this paradigm here that are doing um, uh, uh, beautiful work and some that are doing very um, voracious work. Uh, I've worked, um, uh, I've cooked for um, some of the biggest um, colonizers in the world um, that uh, use, um, uh, that use uh, corporations and use also um, uh, capitalist um, uh, entrepreneurship and capitalist um, uh, advantages over uh, folks that, that don't have as much, that have much less privilege, like uh, Margaret Thatcher. I've also worked for, um, uh, I've cooked for one of the very first um, uh, influencers before um, there was such thing as uh, influencers on Instagram. Um, this was even before, before Twitter. And, uh, and it was really cool because it was someone who was based in my hometown, Chicago, and it was someone who um, came from a background where you would never think they would have an opportunity to be an influencer. It was an African-American woman, and her name was Oprah, and um, I cooked for her in South Carolina. Um, and then I've also cooked for people that have, uh, uh, that are, are cosmically on another level, um, like, um, like Ugly. Um, I've done a couple of, <laughs> A couple of Thanksgivings with uh, with Ugly and um, and uh, his entire family, and I've also cooked for um, Erica Badu. Uh, I've, I've cooked for uh, people that uh, that spend their whole life dedicated to um, to living with compassion, like um, like the Dalai Lama. Um, and then I've cooked for um, the best organizer um, in the world, according to um, uh, to Ugly, and that's uh, my mom Eileen. Uh, so um, I'm I'm really excited to be here. And I'm excited to take it to the next level because uh, abundancy is everywhere. It's out here. Um, there's 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 access to everything that we need in order to be um, healthy, safe, um, loved, fulfilled, happy, um, rich. Um, in 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 every breath that we take, everywhere around us, um, we have access to all of this uh, abundancy. Um, it's just tapping into it and being. Um, uh, being educated on how to and uh, and being ready to having that mindset, um, like um, like the mad Bitcoiner said, um, everyone has their own um, constituency, 
and um, I'm really happy to um, to spread the word of Bitcoin to uh, my constituency, who may be a little bit different from some of the other presenters. We're all very different and unique. Um, earlier today, I was able to check out one of um, one of the first conversations among some uh, some Bitcoiners. I, I uh, last night after. Um, uh, uh, after uh, whew, two weeks of, of uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner preparation for uh, for a huge group um, up in the mountains of Santa Cruz in the Redwoods, um, I just couldn't handle um, uh, having a big conversations at dinner. So I retired early and I missed um, the after dinner sessions. Um, but uh, today I jumped into it with lunch and we had two big corners that were so passionate about their position that it sounded like they were coming from the exact same place. Um, one was was uh, was was using heart and emotion and um, and feeling and um, and living in the present, and the other was um, was was thinking about the future and being and using statistics and using science and facts, and um, and they almost had to hash it out, and I thought that was a beautiful thing, um, and uh, and after that. Um, uh, they continue the conversation in a very loving uh, fashion, and uh, we're able to share and able to um, engage in uh, a wonderful way. And so I'm really excited to be here with um, with all of you Bitcoiners, and I'm excited to join um, uh, Ugly's crew. Um, uh, we're hoping to put out a show on the Bitcoin Chef, and uh, that's going to be a spectacular, um, uh, off the wall, um, uh, a reality show that um, that crosses the worlds of the culinary arts, economics, uh, cryptocurrency, and the world of uh, of Ugly. Um, so excited about that. Um, you can you can find me um, on social media under Sol Cocina. Um, it's in Spanglish because I do a lot of my work in um, Spanish speaking places. So it's Sol like um, like a Sol music S O U L, and then Cocina, which is kitchen C O C I N A. So please um, uh, join uh, Sol Cocina on uh, social media and um, Bitcoin Chef as well too. There'll be links to that at uh, Sol Cocina. But um, uh, I'm looking forward to this opportunity to going from a regular working man to a, a Bitcoin um, a tycoon. Um, so thank you for the opportunity, and um, I, I noticed that there's a lot of strengths here, um, and everyone brings um, a different uh, aspect of um, a Bitcoin knowledge and theory and philosophy and um, uh, and know-how. So I'm looking forward to tapping into the best of all that. Okay, well you're going to be surrounded by the Bitcoin library. You got the middle chair, and then all you uh, all of you entrepreneurs or Bitcoin entrepreneurs, we need to get two more chairs up here. So we are all, we're all going to give, whoops, we're all going to give the new Bitcoin entrepreneur our best advice. All right. Juan, we want you up here too. Can you get up here? Get in this one. All right. Daisy, you know, the one person that has not been introduced yet that I want to introduce, uh, she's another Bitcoin entrepreneur. And uh, I invited her to speak, but she said, oh, I really don't want to speak, but I want to be in a, a, a panel. And so I want to introduce Daisy Collins. She's been taking all your pictures. <laughs> if you don't want your picture published, just let her know. We will respect your privacy. So I guess you let everybody know that already. Yeah. So, okay. So anyway, do you know everybody here? I, oh, I, Amy say I haven't been. Amy say is a new Bitcoin entrepreneur. I mean, she's, I, <clears throat> I, I want her to get all this information too because she's wants to learn. I mean, she's uh, been the wonderful. I couldn't have done it without her. I started in Bitcoin after I met her, and so she's been through the entire cycle. We've been through the entire cycle together, and so I wanted her up here because she can help you too. Uh, uh, Roger. So let's start out. Oh, I, this is another. Per oh, another person I haven't introduced. This is Robert. <laughs> He's going to be our. Well, anyway, I knew it was a lot, a large number of views. And uh, uh, anyway, he'll be talking tonight. And uh, he, I think he's been influenced. Uh, all of us here volunteered our real voices if he wants to greet us in a cartoon character. So um, I don't know if he's going to do that or not. But let me start out. Uh, I have a couple of questions. All right. Well, I'll let you start then. You guys just pass it around and you guys take it from here. Sounds good. Yeah, first of all, I think it's a great idea. Uh, but I just want to ask you a couple of questions so we would, we would know how to advise you. Uh, where are you located? Currently. In uh, Mexico, Oaxaca. Mexico, okay. 
and I'm not very familiar with the philosophy of a chef. Like, do you have any restriction? Like, I'm not going to cook this kind of thing. I'm not going to cook this. I, I focus on uh, plant-based cuisine, but I, I cook everything. I, I cook um, goat, whole goats um, on the ground, whole, whole pigs on the ground. Right. Th that's pretty interesting because Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin space is all about keto carnivore yeah. diet. We're like, yeah, we're anti-vegan pretty much, which is, which is I think hilarious because you know you, you don't want to listen to what what Bitcoiner says about nutrition, right? You, you gotta make your mind on your own. Like, this is not an expert, but. Um, definitely, so I'm thinking how to promote it right right away, like as a marketer, as someone who's interested. Um, you need to do some event, like media events. So what I was thinking, there is a pizza day for Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin pizza day. That would be a really good event, media event for you to start with. Uh, we're all about steaks. Every Bitcoin maximalist posts his steak once a week or something. So that will be another media event. I just have to comment about your outfit. It's beautiful. Yeah. Top to bottom, I love it. <laughs> oh, I would echo, uh, and of course, it, it's it's a wide um, a wide group of people in Bitcoin, but there tends to be, at least recently, uh, a trend of of uh, carniv carnivory and and that sort of thing. So you might want to. I mean, not that you have to always do that, but you could definitely do like. You know, kind of riff on that and potentially do an episode or a couple where no, you, where you on, dig into that. Riff on us. <laughs> yeah, I need to riff on the hard Bitcoiners, you, you know, and, and because we need to be for diversity. You know, this, let me get up here. Oh, yeah. there's, two, there's two philosophies here, but there, it's come, and, and I don't know if they'll ever be resolved, but there's some people that eat to live, all right? All right? And some of us have already lived. I mean, I've had a full life. I don't need anything more. I mean, I live to eat. That's a complete. I'm not worried about what I eat. Okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm ready to go at any time. So I'm not gonna, you know, the whole argument is absolutely irrelevant to me. And it's a free, free world, and obviously we respect uh, everyone's choice to eat whatever they like. Uh, but again, I, I think you'd just find a, a wide audience of Bitcoiners that would find that at least amusing just because it's kind of riffing on something that's popular in the community. So I would definitely do that. Yeah, it's much easier to build a name, to build a brand on being like state Bitcoin chef. Like that would be the easiest way to go for now. Uh, of course, at every conference we still have uh, vegan options and all that stuff. But they're dying yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, also, I think it's a great idea because, you know, we, we love great food and the community has money to pay, so it's a, it's a great market to start with. And uh, would you would you go for something like being a chef at the conference, like, because oh, so they that's usually, yeah, yeah, that's definitely great. Cool. What are you for the food program for the conference? Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh, hi. <laughs> so that's actually what I wanted to give you as an advice, because um, I heard you say that uh, you cooked for some pretty famous people in the past, which is super cool. Um, my story as a photographer is that uh, in the Netherlands, I have a pretty huge uh, clients, like big corporates, I work for big brands like Levi's, Tommy Hilfiger, and all, like, you know, I can name drop all day, but they're not into Bitcoin. Because they don't, don't want, they really don't want to pay me in Bitcoin. They they fall on the ground laughing, you know, like oh, you're so funny. Maybe we should hire another photographer because she's crazy. So what I did is, um, well, I make good money as a photographer. I try to invest in the Bitcoin space because I do want to get paid more in Bitcoin and less in euros. So um, I just try to find my way into the space to get like. It's, it's like not good paid jobs, but to at least work in the space. And through the people that are happy with me working in the space, that you know, word of mouth got me here. Because I met Ugly through Tom. And T Tom believed in me, and um, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna go to Bali in three and a half weeks. I'll, I'll be a photographer there. He's flying in because I'm in the space. And he'd rather fly in a, a, a Bitcoin photographer than a local Indonesian uh, guy to do the photography because he knows that when he pays me in Bitcoin, I'm gonna huddle it. So uh, my advice would be um, just um, find, you know, like for instance, there's gonna be the Uncovered Scalable Conference in Vegas uh, next uh, February and try to contact Tone and ask him if you can do the catering, you know, and then you're there. 
or uh, any other conference or even like a small event. If you can get paid in Bitcoin, people are gonna love that and I'm just gonna reference you and it's gonna grow and grow and grow. Like I, I'm in here now because I started to invest in it and it will all come back to you, the investment. So it's not about making big Bitcoins in the beginning, but it, it'll grow. It's so as big as many jobs as possible. That in the space, yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah, in people paying you in Bitcoin or like even in, um, I, I did some small things just being paid in Lightning and uh, that's so cool, it's like, you know, you, you take a picture of them um, and they just give you li lightning payment, like uh, in uh, Malta, <coughs> uh, the team from, um, yeah, oh, lightning, that's, um, you can do instant payment from your phone in Satoshi's, so um, it's a second layer build on top of Bitcoin, uh, which makes it super easy to send, like, within a millisecond, it's on your phone. So uh, you got your, uh, uh, you, you want me and make it really difficult, but you can just download an app and it's, it, 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 it's gonna work. And you, you don't wanna hold uh, ten thousands of dollars on your phone, but it's just uh, maybe like a hundred bucks or something. And yeah. so tells you to make transfers, you can buy coffee, you can uh, sponsor someone. So for instance, the, um, uh, the team from um, uh, Slashpool, they asked me to do some promotional pictures when I was in Malta. And they said, oh, we'll just give you a bonus. And they sent me some lightning bonus. And that's good, you know? So th that's how it goes. That's my advice. Yeah. So we're, we're recording this, right, Emily? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. need to take notes. Good. Okay. No, you don't need to take notes. I'll give you my email address. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the wine one. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think Thomas said, well, you're anxious to say, Jeff. Give it to Thomas. I'm trying to stay out of trouble here. Uh, no, you're in trouble. I'm the saying that. These are, these are Bitcoin conservatives. They all want to stay carnivorous. Well, I'm, you know, I'm for diversity. <laughs> <laughs> like all, right. all right, so. All right, going back to the world of logic. Well, they've had the Atkins no carb diet since the 1970s. You can go read about it. People have kidney problems after five years. So I would worry about that carnivore everything. I wouldn't focus towards some kind of fad diet that's popular. Uh, what I would do is I would go back to the basics. I hear, I hear a lot about food trucks. Every, every chef that I know is setting up a food truck instead of a restaurant because you own the food truck. So I would wrap the truck with a Bitcoin orange, get a big Bitcoin logo, I would take Lightning Network, like they're saying, and it doesn't matter what kind of food you want to serve, it's important to me that you take the Bitcoin and that you have flyers to tell people about the Bitcoin, stickers on the truck, what the hell is Bitcoin, and you drive around, you go to different neighborhoods, you influence different people, you go direct to them, and you just spread the word through this truck and maybe get an article about it in the newspaper, a national article, guy selling food out of truck, makes thousands of dollars, whatever the article is, and I would focus towards that way rather than the carnivory thing. How about we start a GoFundMe for the Bitcoin truck? <laughs> I, I like that advice a lot and that could happen in, in, in any state or any town because um, uh, food trucks are so popular um, Go so popular now. Billy. That's, that's part of my, my background I actually started the first uh, food truck um, uh, festival in San Francisco it was called Inside Out or we could just go hard and, and go all Bitcoin Oh my God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Or you could give people a discount when they're paying Bitcoin or Lightning. Yeah, you want you want everything they'll give you, like you want you want all the shit coins. Take all the shit coins if you, if it's reasonably easy <laughs> to do it. Take the bitcoin and then and then just sell everything you don't like and keep some bitcoin and then pay your bills, right? Like like if somebody's trying to give you, you know, we hate big cash as bitcoiners. If you're trying to give you big cash, sell it for bitcoin. It's it's still like somebody's going to buy it. It's okay, right? So just sell it and keep the bitcoin. But yeah, like if somebody like don't don't turn customers down, right? I mean that would be my my, my thought. Um, the other thing is yeah, so so the Atkins diet is great. Um, my thing is avoid bread and avoid wheat. I don't I'll eat all the vegetables that make sense to me, and I want organic meat and and, and, and high quality meat. The best argument that the vegans had have against the meat, um, the carnivores. Is 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 factory? Well, in, in, I've, I've debated vegans for fucking years. I've, I've, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
yeah, I've been better than for a long time. And I, I can't, I don't, I don't, I love meat. I don't want to give up meat. But uh, so, so what I've realized is that the best argument they have against carnivores is is uh, factory farming because of the torture of the animals. The, the vegan arguments are usually moral; they're not nutritional. Um, the, I think you could probably bring insights into the nutritional, and and, and the moral argument against and against meat breaks down if you if you take it far enough. And I can have that discussion with you. Um, but uh, bread. Bread is a big problem. So get away from bread, bring veggies, bring meat. That'll be great. So bring insights and, 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 and education to, 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 the, to this carnivore trend. And uh, yeah, just accept, I mean, ex definitely promote Bitcoin, accept the shit coins, sell them for Bitcoin. And um, it will help you to grow on yeah. media, right? On social media. Totally, totally. You'll you get on Twitter account, obviously. And um, I accept the stakes for my yeah. for my marketing service. There you go. <laughs> Get paid in stakes. There you go. And, 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 and maybe, I retweet for free. Yeah. And maybe also make your own uh, Bitcoin chef outfit. You know, yeah. you always oh, yeah. wear it. You always wear it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're on like. Oh, he's good with outfits, obviously. Yeah. He'll figure it out. So no bread, huh? So for the uh, for our pizza party, I need to create the Juan pizza, which is gluten free. Gluten free. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Um, la last thought. Um, yeah, organic, fresh, like like a free range meat. Free range meat is where you want to go. Free range meat and fish. Fish is way better than meat, FYI. Fish, uh, there's no torture involved. Think about this. Think, think about how much stress. Think about, uh, I do know that they prefer grass-fed cow. That's what oh. Jim, Jimmy and Tone always say when we are at the Green River Dinner. I've been to uh, many. <laughs> Is it grass-fed? <laughs> okay, listen to me, Jimmy Song. <laughs> Jesus did not say, I am the meat. He said, I am the bread of life. So I think that we're, you know what? All things are permissible as long as it's not overdone. So I don't, I don't eliminate. I'm not eliminating wheat. Now you might be a different form than I might be eating the wrong, wrong form of meat I'll, I'll, or of wheat. But I don't think anything's prohibited. No, and no, I think prohibited. that's really anti-Bitcoin if we can't be diverse. And as you know, I, I'm free to eat anything. I'm free to eat anything, all right? And he, he, Christ said, I am the bread. He didn't say, I am the meat. Now, he did make a distinction, though. He said, you don't, you, if, you're, oh, if you're just eating bread and that's all, you haven't got it yet. He said, you need to stop eating that bread and start eating the meat I give you. Uh, as much as uh, I agree that uh, a big part of the Bitcoiners are uh, into the carnivory uh, diet, I wouldn't uh, from the start make all these rules. Well, I agree with Ugly about what you do and do not offer. It's about being paid in Bitcoin. So it, while you re can really respect it, you can still give uh, alternatives you know, on your menu. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. No, totally. Offline sell everything, accept everything. But yeah. we are talking about building a brand of Bitcoin Chef. And we're coming up with the easiest way to build a Bitcoin Chef name. And and online, like we're digital, right? We are we're looking into digital ways to promote you. So the best way is never the easiest. Mm. Never. I mean, never. I mean get, it might be in the short run, but I'm telling you this diet thing, it comes and goes. Yeah. You really need to be inclusive. If we're inclusive, if we're diverse, you know. The veg a vegetarian may have a problem with us, yeah. but that's their problem. Bitcoin is money, not religion. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I plan to give the Bitcoiners what, what they want. I don't want any rules on, on, on food and on what I cook. I think that's... that's keep, keep that menu. You know, you're the chef. But also, this may be the easiest, one of the easiest routes to uh, to market the the Bitcoin yeah, chef. But but also, each each uh, individual is unique. And in, in my situation, if I had a truck and and rolled it out in my neighborhood, I have about um, a 40 uh, Zapotec community folks that that earn pesos 
and that in order to, uh, to, to buy a steak, they wouldn't have enough money. So a food truck isn't quite right for me, but what is right for me, especially with all of these resources of online marketing, um, is to have uh, a, a cooking workshop or program or show where I talk about Bitcoin and where I talk about um, uh, diet and I, and I talk about recipes and I cook uh, meals on the show and, and then I can, I can make uh, shows that are customized to my, my clients. And my clients, if, if someone wants to pay $5 a month, then they'll get all the videos and get all the recipes. If they want to pay $10 a month, then they'll be able to um, get a customized video for them where like, hey, I, I love pizza, but I don't eat bread. And, and I want to make sure that I have more fish and less meat. So then I can customize something for them, right? But then they'll have to pay maybe 10 or $15 a month for, for that service, but in Bitcoin. And I can have tiers. And if they pay in Bitcoin, it's $15 a month, but if they want to pay in a different um, form, then it's $20 a month. That way we're uh, promoting Bitcoin and we're getting the word out and, um, and my Bitcoiners are getting everything that they need because I have a basic menu and, and basic show, but then I have uh, specific shows for individual needs that may want to be a member and, and pay more. Bitcoin is measured in bitcoins because it's big money now. It's ten thousand dollars a piece. Yeah, well, well, first I just want to agree with Katie that no true Bitcoiner would accept altcoins. So if you're going to go the marketing route, if you're going to brand the truck or wear the orange chef outfit or whatever, just go all the way. It'll be a lot easier. Uh, secondly, on the wheat, and it's too bad Juan's here to miss this, but it might not be the wheat, it might be the glycophosphate that Roundup and Monsanto is spraying on the wheat. So it might be the chemicals that they're putting on the wheat that are making you sick. So you really have to look at the sources of the problem. And uh, I don't think that carnivory is a huge movement in Bitcoiner. I think there's about two or three people that are into it. There's about 15 people that go to the dinners and pay hundreds of dollars to sit next to Jimmy. I don't know why they would do that, but um, I think there's a lot more just general people into Bitcoin that eat general food that maybe don't think about it a lot. Maybe they're not into nutrition. Maybe they're vegans, maybe whatever. But we had a, uh, 
like a vegetarian alternative dinner to the carnivory dinner and we had 90 people there. So it was huge and nobody had to pay to sit next to anybody. You could sit wherever you want. So. I'm back to marketing shit, you know. Um, so I remember last pizza day, there was um, a group of guys in Los Angeles who tried to come up with pizza with a QR code of their wallet. So they used salami and cheese to do white and, and black things. It didn't work for them, but I'm sure you're much better at it. So if you can actually do pizza with your QR code, I'm sure people will send you Satoshi's just for making it happen because it's fun and that's cool. So something like this, those small, small fun memes, right? Like things that people just, uh, cool. So that's something that will help you grow if it just go, goes viral. And this QR pizza code, QR code pizza definitely did go viral. No, maybe like a, a QR chocolate or something. Yeah. Or you got this edible paper that which you print on yeah. bread, huh? something like that. Okay, also yeah, think yeah. about this. Yeah. With your wallet, right? You're getting paid. Anybody else? Anybody out here have any good advice for our, for our up and coming master chef? Just you can you can okay. laser engrave. You can laser engrave this on the uh, pepperoni or whatever you want on your pizza. Oh. With, with a QR. With yeah. A, yeah. Your turn. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Come on up here, That's okay. I'll sit down. Okay, sit down. So I'm just gonna add something. Um, you guys mentioned about um, veganism and vegetarianism. Uh, I have a background in gen uh, genetics. I worked as a geneticist for, for quite a while. And um, one thing that we noticed is that uh, humans are omnivores and some humans evolved in an environment where they had restriction of meat. And so they have evolved the capabilities, uh, like, for example, converting some of the uh, fatty acids from LAA into DHA and EPA, which is crucial for the brain development. So what happens when somebody follows uh, veganism uh, when they don't have that gene? Not fun. So you have to make sure that that thing is for you if you care about your health. Now, if it's um, if you are if you are one of these lucky people that you don't need to eat meat and uh, uh, you do just fine on the, the vegan diet, great, go for it. But I don't think it's responsible to tell other people that they should do the same thing. And the the moral aspect of it, what Juan mentioned, is that yes, it's absolutely a moral issue. But why? to focus on preventing other people from eating meat rather than focusing on the, the humane farming. A good farmer could give a wonderful, uh, beautiful life to an animal and then essentially take the, take the animal's life to nourish himself. That's the most natural, beautiful thing that's been happening for thousands of years. That animal may not have that life at all, if not for that farm. When did that start, Castusis? What's that? When did that all start? Uh, the, the, the farm? No. What was the first sacrifice? Who made the first sacrifice? Abraham. No. It was the Lord for Adam. I see. <laughs> That's a while ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was in the beginning. <laughs> you would remember. <laughs> what was the first thing created? Oh, oh. <laughs> Chicken or the egg? Time. In the beginning. Yes. I agree with that. <laughs> word upon word, precept upon precept. That's right. Me. <coughs> so, yeah, to basically to summarize, um, everyone... Uh, they're all right. Yeah, everybody's they're, right. Everyone's right, but everybody, just you, you don't you don't really have to. <laughs> no, everybody's wrong. That's what you're getting. That's why they killed it. That's why the Lord killed the animal because we're all wrong. That's why we limit our government.
Go on. <laughs> uh, well, Juan said that we live in this type of universe that there are unstoppable forces. Well, uh, so no, 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 we're free, we're free to eat anything, and so he's free to cook anything. We, I don't want to put a restriction on his menu. That's my whole thing. As long as he's not deliberately harming, he might harm me by accident, and I. That's. But if he's de deliberately harming us, that's the only evil that he. I have a question. So the vegetarians, the vegetarians, for the cause, for the save the animals. If I keep the, the microphone. No, no, no. I, I, I have no. If I have a chicken, a nutrition panel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it takes ten liters to make one almond, guys. No, okay, okay, okay. If I have a, if I have a chicken, a pressed chicken, cooked, and I tell a vegetarian, and I have another live chicken in my hand, and say, if you don't eat this chicken, I kill another chicken. <laughs> Would you eat the chicken? <laughs> to save is that, another chicken. Is that, is that a question for me? For any vegetarian. <laughs> I'm not vegetarian. I'm fairly certain that was on the fallacy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, the answer is jump up one that. semantic level and kill the <laughs> asker. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I met a, I met a, a guy once uh, a few years ago. He was uh, wearing full white tunic. The guy used to be a corporate American sort of executive, right? A killer, right? He was just making the big money. And then I guess he got depressed or something happened and he just had to, he had to leave. So this is the story he told me. He, so he went to like a Tibetan sort of Buddhist mountain somewhere in Asia and you know, I'm ignorant of Asia so I'm just painting with brush, big brush. But so he went place. to Tibet and, and, and studied Buddhism and meditated and <laughs> contemplated the big questions and the meaning and all the things. And then he realized that uh, he didn't know what he was doing with his life. So he started exploring what he was doing with his life. Ended up in Africa and ended up hanging out with an, with an African tribe that were hunter-gatherers. These guys are using, you know, the hunting and eating, so the story goes, uh, the way that humans used to eat. And uh, one of the tribe's sort of elders, this guy was, uh, you know, the wise elder. So he... he the wise elder invited him on a walk down this sort of sp the forest in the area where he was at. And uh, this guy was, uh, this elder was amazing. He would just walk around and like, the forest was full of leaf and full of life and he would just pick a leaf and, and, and pull the, the branch of the leaf and the seed and he would like, here, this is nutritious, this is not. And he would just, everything in the forest was nutritious if you knew what it was, not everything, but he knew what was nutrition was. And we just kept feeding, and he would feed parties that would follow him as he walked down the forest. So my friend asked him, uh, so what's the, you know, what's the deal? Do you guys eat meat? And he said, well, we are hunters. And the way that we do it is, um, you know, we, we, we go out with our bows in our party, in a, in a party of hunters, and then we, we look for a deer. And if we see a deer, we aim at it, and we're ready to shoot. But we don't shoot immediately. We wait and we look at the deer. And if the deer looks back at us and doesn't run away, then that means to us that he's ready to become part of us. And so we shoot, shoot him and we invite him and then we appreciate him becoming part of us and integrating his life source into ours. And then, you know, we become, I guess, nourished. nourished. If the deer have just bad eyes. Okay, I think we have, we focused a, a lot of time and energy on, on what the menu should be, um, going off onto uh, vegetarianism and veganism, and, and this is very beautiful. Thank you. We actually cooked that way in in, in Oaxaca, where where we uh, we use hunting and gathering um, traditions. Uh, we do wild foraging. There's lots of wild mushrooms right now. It's the rain season. There's lots of different plants and herbs and berries. 
um, and fruit uh, that, that come to us in the, in the forest. And there's also animals as well too uh, that, that we hunt. And when we, when we hunt and we eat meat, we uh, use it as a, as a time to celebrate. And, um, and, and it's, it's, it's a plant-based diet, but we do integrate meat into, into our diet as well too. And it's based on the traditional um, Zapotec communities there. Um, and, and so by, by no means do I personally um, uh, promote uh, veganism or a vegan diet. I, I promote um, uh, diversity in, in, um, in, in what we consume and how we eat and also using compassion. And personally, I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, some of the big issues on, um, on, uh, on eating meat that, uh, that vegetarians or, or, or vegans may have is based on, um, on uh, moral issues and on being cruel to the animal, which, which is true. But a, another big part is um, environmentally too, because there's lots of deforestation due to um, uh, mass production of, um, of uh, uh, industrial farming. Um, so there's a lot of other issues like that. But I think instead of moving on to those issues, um, I've, I've really appreciated so far a lot of the, um, the marketing ideas that, um, that we've come up with. Um, uh, for, for creating uh, who is the Bitcoin chef and how does the Bitcoin chef um, uh, make his first moves um, and become successful and resilient and, um, and, and some of the ideas about accepting uh, Bitcoin um, and using lightning and, um, and accepting other currencies besides Bitcoin too so, so that uh, I'm not um, I, uh, shooting myself with, um, with this uh, integrity of, oh, only Bitcoin, and then how am I going to sustain I, the business? Yeah, I would warn you about that. If you mm -hmm. take other things into Bitcoin, then people, you are sending a bad signal to people. I would not recommend you do that. Yeah, when, when I, creating I your that. brand, big one chef, I'm big one only chef, and it's like, we, we send the dominance of the market, right? And it's pretty much the same on, on the like marketing stuff. So 75% of crypto people are into Bitcoin. Like we, we see that, right? The market shows. So that would be the easiest, the easiest way to show <laughs> pictures of yourself. Yeah, you're not crypto chef. Yeah. You're gonna sell it right for Bitcoin. So I know that in your industry, probably Instagram is way more popular, right? But you just have to go where Bitcoiners are, which is Twitter, most of the time, YouTube, of course. So, yeah, just go to the same places, post something that can go viral easily. We all will help, right? And yeah, you will you will build your brand, your name pretty easily. You'll be you'll be doing cool stuff at the conferences. I'm sure people yeah. want to see yeah. Bitcoin chef at their conferences. Yeah. I I got a question. So I, I think Roger's ready to jump into this. And you guys all have wallets because you're Bitcoin entrepreneurs and you're using Lightning Network. Like, I'd kind of like to hear like from each of you what wallet you recommend uh, to uh, Roger and why and, and, and how to do Lightning. You know, what's the best way to do Lightning payments? Yeah, what, what you guys have sort of like lessons learned from that part of it. Have you That's a long conversation. I just want to follow up. I, I think you should talk about that, but I, I uh, wanted to just follow up on what you just said, which is the, uh, on, the, on the messaging side, the branding side. If you're talking about wanting to create viral content, did you happen to catch my talk at noon? No, no, I came right after your talk. Okay, yeah, I was talking about, um, you could maybe check it out online, I'll send you the, uh, I'll share the presentation with you, but I was talking about uh, something called holarchies, which is basically um, these ideas, I was putting together a chart of the different social memes which are related to Bitcoin, some of them actually uh, you know, informed its creation, but they're sort of related. And you can use charts like that as a guide as you're getting familiar with this, with the culture of Bitcoin users uh, on Twitter, for example, if your uh, tweet, if you want to promote yourself, if your tweet is covering one or more, two, three, the more you're sort of in the, in the area of already, trends. yeah, trends and social memes that are already re closely related and, and enthusiastic, have like enthusiastic support then your message will get out faster because it will resonate with the crowd more. So you can research that and combine, if you know, there's a Bitcoin carnivory crowd that you can uh, craft your meat 
posts directly to. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's skin in the game. Uh, you saw uh, Encanto was on my chart. This is the Taleb book series. Skin of the game was one of those. Anything to do with, with that is very closely related to any business or even in cooking too. Where you have skin in the game, you're like risking putting your, you're putting your safety on the line every day that you cook. You could hurt yourself. You could burn yourself. You could cut yourself. Uh, you know, so you, you've got skin in the game every time you pick up a knife. So things like that. That's my. We have a question from Andy. So it's more than my question exactly. statement. So exactly. we keep on talking about social network and socializing. This is a network already. So it's great that they're giving you ideas. But at the end of the day, why do you love cooking? That's what you have to market on. Your passion for cooking. And then why, why are you all of a sudden, it's not all of a sudden, interested in Bitcoin and teaching people about Bitcoin? And how do those two come together? And that's that's all you have to market. If you market what you love, the rest of it will come. So these people are here because they believe in Bitcoin, fundamentally. And then there's other stuff that they're producing. She's a photographer. She loves photography. But now because she believes in Bitcoin, she's marketing towards Bitcoin. Juan, uh, he has his, his face. He believes in, I don't know, I don't know you know, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, Bitcoin, but like, that's what he's doing now. And he's connecting into Bitcoin. Because Duda started as a genetic scientist, and then he was uh, training uh, people in the past for competitions. And he trained, he coached me for competitions. Then he developed the supplement business and real estate. And, he, and all of that, he tied it into Bitcoin. So fundamentally, at the, at the bottom, it was all Bitcoin. So for you, it doesn't matter what advice anybody else gives you. The, the core of it is your love for cooking. So don't let anything else take that and then tie Bitcoin into that how those two come together. Because the best way you can tell people how to jump into the bad one is why you love it. And if you can sell people on why you love it, people will come to it. People will feel it. Yeah. I hope that all got recorded, Marcella. That was great. I yeah. think that's a better answer yeah. than anybody yeah. else. Yeah. 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 It's your passion, man. I mean, you're not first a Bitcoiner. You're primarily, you're a world-renowned chef that wants to get into they focus on what you know and what you do. I don't know all the back end of Bitcoin. I never will, okay? But I do know, I know very little, but what I do know, I know well. And that's the most important thing. You know, if you're going to be a photographer, be the very best photographer. You know, if you're, if you're going to teach about privacy and security and inheritance, do the very best. I mean, that was just a fantastic presentation today that uh, Wong gave. So, I mean, he's the guy that the, we asked for, for, you know, where do we get the wallet? You know, so there, the, those are the basic things that you're, you're just starting out, and it's a very much of a learning process. And then when it comes to these all points, I would, you know, there are certain situations we were on, I, I think we're, we were told a bit, but we were, had some extra tickets, and we had some extra tickets, so we, had, but we thought that we'd auction them off for, I don't know, so many Ethereum and so many we figured, you know, we don't want Ethereum, but we can understand if somebody wants to get rid of them, okay, you know, give them, pay us, and, and we'll sell it for a Bitcoin. We don't want to hold it. I, I, have, I have a very simple equation for this, and, and just to be super clear, don't promote altcoins or shitcoins unless you profoundly and, 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 and very well researched way believe in them, and, and very profoundly, and ask all your friends. Maybe should yeah. maybe, and maybe, and maybe still don't, <laughs> but, so we, I pump Bitcoin, we all pump Bitcoin, I dump shit coins. I accept them and I dump them, right? Because maybe that's what makes sense. And that's a money management investment sort of play. Marketing, marketing is different, right? And this is all, this is all marketing and money stuff, right? Again, you sell your, you sell your, 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 your craft and, and, and you do your thing. But uh, yeah, from a marketing perspective, there's just been a lot of chaos around funny money and Bitcoin, uh, yeah, Bitcoin's real. And people will think that you, you like that coin if you start taking yeah, it. And then you gotta explain, you know, that you don't want it and you're just selling it. So I wanted to answer uh, the wallet question that we had. Uh, first off, I wouldn't suggest one wallet. I would use multiple wallets. So I would have uh, right now, I like green address on the phone from Blockstream. It's pretty good. You have to write down your words. It's a little difficult, but then at least you have a copy of your words. 
that's a starter Bitcoin wallet. Then of course I'd get a Trezor or maybe a Ledger for a backup. You don't want to keep all your money on your phone. You don't want to keep all your money at the food truck, at the restaurant, wherever it is you want it safe somewhere. And then as far as the Lightning wallets, they're all just very new and coming out, so I'd try one of those. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and unfortunately redirect us back to the food topic. What do you guys think of these uh, Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger, this lab-grown meat? Does that ruin the carnivory for you? Is it the same thing? Is it chemical food? Maybe just yes or no if you'd eat it, and oh, then if you have more, I pass it down. What you eat to the genetic food, the lab-grown meat? Well, you'll get a chance. We'll go the whole panel. We're in Canada. I like the, the carnivore diet. I, that's the best for me, about the fibromyalgia, I mean high, High protein diet. What happened? Yeah. Remember, we had that Beyond store. What was the name Which of that? Canada? Beyond Meat or anything? Uh, oh, that's what it was. Oh, it was. Oh, it was. so bad. Oh, really bad. The They're worst awful. place that we ever had. Right. Oh. <laughs> and they're all over Canada. And we go, oh, this is how can it be? Is it any better and better? I respect everybody diet, but I I can't survive without without carnivore diet. Yeah. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I've heard that um, it doesn't, it's not, it hasn't been alive, you know, like it's sort of alive, which is weird, but it also hasn't developed antibodies in, 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 in a sort of, uh, a, a defense sort of nervous system and so on, like it hasn't lived, you know, there's something about living that makes you strong, and if you're just kind of like, you know, created it in, in the middle of like a slice of life, you're, 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 you're a week in birth, and that that's, you know what I mean? Like, it's incomplete, right? And and, and there's something about, like, uh, the defense systems, right? I forget, I forget the name, I forget, yeah. What's, what's the name of the, sort of, like, like when you get sick, you're at, there, there's antibodies. Your, antibodies. antibodies, there's something about the antibodies that, that, that the sort of, this, this uh, lab meat doesn't have, I heard. I would, I would look into that. I don't think they're selling lab meat. Well, what's Roger have to say? You like skipped Roger. So I can Roger, see say so. Uh, say so, looking confused because we are from Europe and uh, like you know, nobody in Europe is busy with this. Uh, I don't have an answer to it. Like we, like we don't have this in Europe. Uh, maybe in a lab somewhere, but you definitely cannot buy it anywhere. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy we are behind on this. <laughs> Well, let me be clear on my diet. I'm from Siberia. That's where my dad would go hunt a bear and we would eat it with the whole family. As of now, I eat raw meat, like not rare, not blue, like raw meat. I just put some salt on it and eat it. So uh, I'm carnivore itself. Yeah, I do eat a vegetables too, but yeah, I'm definitely not ready to give up my great raw meat uh, with some lab lab grown meat. It's like, it's like out meat, you know? Uh, like, like shit meat, like it's like shit coin, shit coin meat, out meat, yeah. I'm, I'm not touching that. Out meat, yeah. Yeah, ditto to all of that. I, I want to get back to uh, to the wallets. So I, I definitely would, would echo, I think it makes sense to have a good, like regular Bitcoin wallet, green wallet's great. There's a, plenty of other good ones, but definitely want one that's open source, and you want one where you can get the backup key, like the 12 word or 24 word phrase, and make sure you write that down multiple places. Like, you know, have one at home somewhere safe, and maybe send one to your mom to hold for you, for example. Um, uh, hardware wallet's a really good idea for larger holdings. In terms of Lightning Network, this is very new technology. It's still, quite frankly, experimental. Um, and, but for small purchases, it, it's, it's a good way to go. Um, I would actually probably recommend, if you depends on if you have a terminal or what your setup is, but if you have a computer, um, you might want to try to use, there's, what is it, tippin.me? Tippin.me. I would just use that. So this is like, it's a third party service. But basically, the, the problem with Lightning is if you're, uh, you have to worry about inbound and outbound capacity and all sorts of nonsense, and it's very difficult. So if you're just using tip and not me, they take care of all that stuff for you. And then what I would do is just wait until you get to a couple hundred dollars and then transfer that out to your to your regular Bitcoin wallet. So it's still Bitcoins, but it's in this payment channel, and tip and deals with all the payment channel nonsense for you, basically. So that's what I would recommend. That'll make your life easy. And then just remember to, to you know pull those funds out periodically, and you'll be good to go. 
yeah, it's cool, be secure and all that stuff, but as a service provider, you have to think about user experience, right? So when you choose in the, the wallet, think about how convenient it is for the customer, because some wallets are still not good with secure cards. Jugs always being stupid with secure cards, for example. Um, so to address that question, I have uh, a little bit more progressive view. I think that most of the, uh, the hardware wallets and software wallets will be obsolete. Um, I don't believe we need them. Uh, there's, there's a certain a psychological effect when you have a physical treasure wallet somewhere sitting you know, in your house. It's like that uh, squirrel with a nut. You're always aware of it, right? And, you, and that anxiety is, for some reason, still there. It, you know, if you, not for everyone, but for a lot of people. So Brain Wallet is the, the best one we have right now. However, it's very slow. We don't have a wallet terminals yet, but we will have them very soon, where you will be able to use an app which doesn't store any of your data at all. It's just the window to the blockchain. And you'll be able to sign a transaction every time to a little bit of memory or biometric data combination, preferably. So I would focus on memorizing the C, because that's the best way we have right now, and using something like Samurai Wallet for the very quick transactions. If you use um, from Samurai to Samurai, that's probably one of the most secure ways of uh, transacting Bitcoin, um, because it's uh, uh, you know uh, private and secure by default. They have a very clever ways of handling that, where they mix in, 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 in um, the transactions and it's, it's not traceable, even using the heuristic techniques. So I would just stick with Samurai Wallet for small transactions and for uh, for, for HODL. Uh, do whatever you have to do, use it like uh, the Trezor Wallet or whatever you need, but make sure you have a Brain Wallet as well, because you want to make it unlosable. What would you eat the lab-grown meat? Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, that's actually a very interesting question. I've been, it's a very good question because uh, I've, been, I've been following that for years. Uh, at first, when it came out, people called it Schmidt because, <laughs> because it's, you know, shit and meat. It looked like shit, but it was meat. Uh, <laughs> Why is it meat? Because this is what you know about. What? Because it wasn't meat to me. What, what, what are you talking, what is it? Oh, so, so what they do, they grow the individual cells, uh, muscle cells, in the lab. So it's kind of like eating dead babies. Not exactly, it, because well, it, I mean, if you if you have the the whole <laughs> congress, you know, of, uh, you of cells, then you have level. some sort of being, right? But if you can, the muscle cell is also a being, right? Uh, but the problem was the palatability. No one wanted to eat that. And it was super expensive, you know, very expensive. Uh, so the challenge was that how to make it more of a meat. Uh, so they realized, oh, we have to put uh, connective tissue uh, uh, cells in there. We have to, you know, and then it, and then keep trying and trying to make it more look, look like a meat. And I think they're really close to that, where they could um, make it look like a meat. It's still very expensive, so it's not, you know, you can, it's not, yeah, it's not scalable, uh, but with time, I think it, it will be. And I think with time, we'll have these hydroponic ponds and uh, like our own grown nutrition. And of course, there's a lot of scientific challenges to, to, to overcome, like you said, like, you know, it needs to be as close as possible to what exists in nature. Um, but once, once we handle that, won't really need to grow the whole animal if you just want you know, a part of it. I don't know, this is beyond me. I, I was in Canada and it was like, I, I, it's kind of like, I think it's like fee cash, some, you know, because we went into this place, we thought we were getting hamburgers. And we thought, it, it's beyond, oh, this is beyond me, this is gonna, have, you know, is this Angus or, or Herford? What is this? And we go, huh? Oh, this, it was, the worst, we were on, we had wonderful food all over Canada, but I forgot the name of that owner. They were everywhere. It was like the McDonald's of Canada. And I would go, oh my gosh, how can these people eat this? It must be what the rest of the world thinks of America when they, you know, eat and go to McDonald's. It's like turkey meatloaf. 
So, so Kwame is going to answer a question about the wallet, but I just wanted to say that we came up with another name for it now because of the non-scalability. Let's call it MEET, with double E. Like, like ETH. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I would agree with everybody that here. The, so green, green address, green wallet uh, is the best open source Bitcoin, Android wallet. I think there might be an iOS as well. Yeah, so green address, that's your base Bitcoin wallet. Get that one on your phone. Uh, for hardware wallets, I would suggest Trezor. I think Trezor is the best. It's, it's the most open source hardware wallet there is, as far as I know. Next up would be Ledger. Uh, but Trezor's great. Well, Ledger's not uh, open source. It's, uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm not gonna debate that right now. But, and um, for Lightning, uh, so if you wanna stay within Lightning, under 500 bucks, the light, this, the wallet of Satoshi uh, has the best user experience, very easy. That's the one I recommend to people use when they're getting into Lightning, just because it's so it's so easy, it's just beautiful wallet. Wallet of Satoshi, I can hook you up later, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll take 20 minutes with you and I'll um, tip, tipping dummy might be good a little bit near the next level as far as lightning goes. Um, oh, and don't use non-segwit wallets because bitcoiners are going to hate you and never going to hire you. He doesn't even know what segwit is, so don't even, don't even worry about that. Just do a Yeah, green address, you're good, and uh, treasure, you're good. And uh, yeah, that's great. That's as easy as it should be. We don't have to be debating, you know, super, super niche technical details about anything like that. Good yeah. to you. I mean, I wish yeah. Coinbase hadn't screwed up because Coinbase was so nice at one time. But now, you know, don't go to Coinbase. No, yeah, nice. yeah, we all wish you good luck. I can do that. Thank you. 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 Thank